I'm interested in depicting in my work real women. These, the women that I work with are real women. They're everyday women. They're the women that you don't see in the magazines. They have a grit and a residue about them. You know, they have freckles. <laughs> they have history. They have stories. They, you know, they're all different sizes. You know, they're all different heights. They're variant in color degrees of blackness. They have different textured hair. And to me, that's always been my world. And I, I want to see those women in my pictures because I want little girls to be able to see themselves in those images. And to identify with all of those different degrees of beauty within black women. It's claiming Africans and black women as Greek gods, <laughs> you know, these tribal warriors, you know, sister soldiers, you know. So for me, that's what Afro goddess is. A woman who is standing on her foundation and owning every aspect of who she is. Photography changed the game for me in a really big way. It really did. It allowed me to really think conceptually, pictorially, and also about represent representation. It really allowed me to start looking at my own self, the black bodies around me, my own black body, uh, my familial black bodies, and just really start thinking of how the power of these images could be Provide, presided in a pictorial and photographic form. At that, up until that time, I have never considered it, but it, it really shift my work because up until that moment, before taking a photo class, I was working primarily abstractly without using the figure or really without considering myself and art. Um, it allowed me to think on some personal levels, but also more theoretical le levels and also look at my work socially and culturally. So I think photography for me also allows me to think compositionally, formally, and I, I actually use photography within my practice as a form of drawing. I think a lot of artists, they may you know sketch out their ideas for me, Photography works out in that way. Using it as a medium to just like formalize my work and conceptualize it is a big aspect of my practice. It's definitely a melting out of identities in my work. I feel like the women that I choose to photograph, there's a thread and line that I feel is a sense of, they possess something that I possess. I see a lot of myself in them. And so therefore I feel like a lot of my photographs are self portraits. Photographing my mother did completely change my work. I think it allowed me to go into very intimate places and also some family members' intimate spaces, like my mother. It allowed me to understand the dynamics of a mother and daughter and also to really sort of deal with some of the issues that we had, but also just creatively, just really looking at my mother as an individual, understanding her, her inner power, but also her vulnerability, really taking in all of her prowess and what she was exuding and trying to capture that. So it was, again, using my mother as that, that catalyst, as representation in my work, really was transformative in how I could see myself. I began using myself as the subject because at the time I was really apprehensive to use anyone else in my work that I didn't know. It was really important for me as an artist to put myself in those positions. I was asking my mother or other women in my life to portray. It allowed me to understand the, the power of visibility. 
the power of images, the power of seeing yourself in images, the power and importance of other people seeing the reflection are things that are familiar to them in images so that they have something to relate to and that they feel a sense of inspiration. I think seeing my mother in those images gave me that the sense of validation of seeing yourself in images and providing a sense of agency for others. How I select the women I shoot, it's, you know, it's, it varies. Mostly I select, you know, family members and friends. Women that are charismatic, have a strong inner strength, exude a sensuality that conveys uh, confidence, who own her sexuality, who is not afraid of um, expressing their own indivi individuality. Beautiful women. I find women a beautif beautiful, you know, it's just so many aspects to women that are very powerful and that I'm attracted to. But a lot of it comes from that glamour and desire that I saw and really want to convey that I witnessed from my mother. The reason why I, I describe them specifically as a co collaboration is because they bring something to the, the, the photo shoots and also to the pictures that, I, that I'm just a witness. You know, I'm just you know, a creative art director that's able to capture or have the privilege and honor, really, to capture it on film and allow them to present to the viewer who they are. So for me, that is a really collaborative response. It's a call and response, like a tete-a-tete -a -tete between me and the sitter, and it's just really fantastic. And I think a lot of it has to do with the type of installations that I, I construct. It's the construction of these spaces that allow this sense of comfort, this sense of familiarity, this sense of ownership, this sense of I am here and I'm claiming this space because what's in these constructed spaces are things that they can relate to, whether it's from their own personal experiences of domesticity through their own houses of family or or you know their their parents' house, their auntie's house, their grandmother's house, whatever, or someone else's house where they've been. It's like this journey that they understand the particular spaces that I provide for them to sit in. It was definitely a reveling in their in their sexual power. I think you know there's oftentimes young girls are told to deny that part of themselves, that you're beautiful, but be sexy, but not too sexy, right? <laughs> be, you know, be all of these things, but not too much. Just give us a little. And, and, if, it's, and if you do give 100%, then it's all of these negative labels uh, put on into, into a woman's sexuality. We, as a human race, which should really own the fact that sexual power is revelation. And there's nothing wrong with exuding that or expressing that. I think sexiness could be the way a woman crosses her legs or just the way she gazes out at you. You know, there's, there's something to that innate power that is transformative. I think there's been extreme stereotypes put on black women, animalistic and, you know, this eroticism and exoticism of the black body, right? That our sexuality comes from the uh, sort of ideologies of uh, the patriarchal, white patriarchal society when in reference to beauty. It's really quite interesting how the beauty is being reversed. And particularly when you come thinking of 19th century uh, portraiture in reference to Manet and all of these individuals and the type of women that they were using in their work. 
whether they were from harems or prostitutes, wherever these women were, but that became sort of the iconic images that white women start to personify. And it's, it's always these role reversals of how we see ourselves. And I think we all play a form on like what the root of uh, beautification and ideologies come from. But I think if we just think of the human race, it's so amalgamated. That's why I think it's really important throughout generations, throughout decades, to have images, powerful images that represent all type of women. So that when young girls see themselves in these images, they can sort of decide the reflection in the mirror image of the, the, who they want to identify with. And you won't know that unless you see yourself in, in particular images. And that's why portraiture, portraits are very powerful. Photography is probably one of the most powerful tools we have right now. Fragmentation and collage and assemblaging all of these particular genres and images and uh, deconstructing them is a way of really trying to make sense of how to formulate compositions and understand painting formalities and to, to trying to comprehend the art language and source out all of the discourses of art that surround me to make sense of particular revolutions <laughs> when it comes to political or cultural divides. Cubism, phobism, pop art, uh, decorative art, outside of art, folk art, <laughs> all of that is in my work. How do you make sense of all of these informations that are put toward you? And so for me, Collage is a way of really trying to ascertain who I am and where I am in the world. Collage has always been a form of creativity within African Americans, because it's, you know, who we are is a collage in itself. We're live, we've always lived in the world of double consciousness. I think it's more than two worlds. I think it's beyond the double consciousness. We're always, and I think just all of us within the di diaspora, you know, even what we're always working within several spaces of our world. And those particular identities play a part in my work and play a huge part in working within collage. There's always been this divide and in interest to try to integrate painting and photography. I'm not necessarily interested in photographic elements in my work that are literal. I'm interested in photographic images in my work that has to deal with the painting language. It's definitely a conscious formal to, to deconstruct the frame of the photographic and the painting image. I'm, I'm constantly pushing up against those Western constructs of how one sees or put together a pictorial uh, and figurative space. I've started to really explore some of the similar things within my paintings, within my photo collages. And I think it allows me to really integrate this figure ground relationship that just really, you know, the idea of fragmentation really excites me. I really love when you have these various parts that creates a whole uh, or how they deconstruct themselves and fall on themselves and the viewer has to find their way almost like a mapping or a maze through the images or create make their own connections and then, and I think that's why collage excites me most. There's so many images out in the world and there's so many images that I actually take and I juxtapose them into a lot of the images that I make. And I think for me, it's really exciting to pull from other sources and sort of like a puzzle, put them together and see if, you know, they work with other images. And I think those different worlds of conversation bring new discourses. Most recently, I started really pulling from art historical images and really 
allowing some art historical relationships to come to the forefront in my work. Uh, and that began to be very exciting to me, that exploration of how uh, I can take photographic images and collage them with some of my own images, whether they're mine, the sense of appropriation, but allowing the sense of appropriate images to become a part of my own language. There's so much to photography that is so vast these days. My sets are taken from thinking about places in which I experienced growing up, looking at different books from, you know, the 70s. <laughs> uh, but not just the 70s. I think my sets are just a combination of different periods. They're just uh, definitely about memory and definitely about nostalgia and definitely about a particular time that I recall as a child of a space where families would gather, you know, where you have your, your aunties over, your uncles, and everyone would come over, and it was just a sense of social discourse and entertainment that always excited me, being the little girl in the corner of the door peeking through and seeing, you know, different family and friends uh, having serious conversations about politics or just, you know, throwing the record on and just like having a house party. <laughs> the bold tribal richness of my raw patterns signify this residue and real sense of uh, urban life, right? And heritage, ancestors, you know, I think uh, it's almost a form of uh, dealing with, uh, in some sense, of camouflage. I think uh, a decorative element of uh, artifice, right, of how we layer and sense of scarification. I think patterns are, you know, there's these fractal layers of, of movement and uh, their, their geography. It's exciting to just create this amalgamated sense of cacophony within the patterns. Create this flamboyance in your face boldness. And this over-sensorized uh, element that could be quite jarring, but then there's this moment within the space with the figure that allow this calming uh, sense of elation.